Welcome to Lake Eild, one of Victoria's premier fisheries. There is nothing quite like it. The amount of fish in this system when it comes to Murray Cod, also golden perch, trout, the size of the lake from right up the top of the Delatide Arm all the way down to the southern reaches. The water colour is very clear here, especially in higher water levels, and the cod grow to ridiculous sizes. There's plenty of fish well over the metre mark into that 120 centimetre mark and beyond. And if you've never fished Eildon before, it is definitely a place you want to put on your bucket list. Now, if you are coming to fish Eildon, enjoy the rest of this video because we're gonna run through some of the key lures, the key areas, and a key technique for fishing this system. I'm really keen, it's winter time, it's big cod time. We're gonna show you how we do it, what we do, and what we use. Before we jump into some of the techniques, I just want to run through the different seasons that we would come to Eildon now. You can come year round. Cod fishing here is open in spring, which is the closed season for our river systems and many other lakes. So you can come year round. Summertime, really good for smaller fish. If you're just getting into lure fishing for cod or even bait fishing, great popular time to come. Lots of people are out here, but lots of fish are active. You've got smaller 50 centimeter fish up to your larger ones. Trolling rocky banks, a lot of the main basin area and quite deep, that six to seven meters is the prime time for summer. My favorite time is winter time because the big fish become on the prowl. They get on the prowl, they look for food, they're on the move and they're active and they're shallow. So for this trip, we'll be fishing anywhere from a meter down to about five or six meters, but likely even shallower. That three to four meters is prime. Your shallower, flatter point rather than your steeper banks in this spindly stuff like you can see behind me here using quite big lures chasing trophy size fish summer's really good winter's really good we're here in winter change your technique depending on the time of year Eildon is a really big lake system and it can get a little bit overwhelming when you're planning a trip to come and chase cod. Now, first of all, it does depend on what time of year you're coming, whether it's really hot like summer or the middle of winter. But as a run through, I'm gonna share a couple of my top spots. There's a lot of spots you can chase them. They live pretty much throughout the entire lake, but a few of my key spots. First of all, Jerusalem Creek is a great launching base from the southern end. So if you're launching, Jerusalem Creek is a great boat ramp, great facilities you can put in there and travel to quite a fair chunk of the southern end of the lake. So that's a great place to launch. If you're coming from the northern end and you want to fish down in the southern reaches of the lake, Goffs Bay is a good access point coming in from the Mansfield side. And the other good option is the Delatide Arm. If you want to camp for free, the Delatide Arm has some really good campsites scattered along the southern bank in the forestry plantation. They're really good access points. Plus, there's a stack more, heaps of caravan parks, lots of other things on the water. In terms of chasing cod, a few of the key zones. The Goulburn River Arm down in the southern end is a prime spot for Murray Cod. It is very popular. It does get a lot of boat activity through there. Lots of people go there, but for good reason, because it holds some of the best concentrations of cod in the entire system. The Goulburn River Arm is the major river inflow in Lake Eildon, rolls in through the very southern reaches down near Jamison. Great cod population, heaps of standing trees, beautiful big steep rocky banks, amazing area to focus on. The next key spot is the Big River Arm. It's quite a narrow arm, it's quite long, it's down in the south as well, and the Big River Arm produces a lot of fish as well. But any of those southern reaches are great for cod. And last of all, my other key spot for cod is the dam wall and the banks opposite the dam wall in that main basin area of Eildon. They're perfect trolling banks. If you wanna come up for a quick session, summer session, you wanna troll or even cast the steeper rocky stuff, the banks opposite the dam wall, on the northern foreshore or the dam wall itself. Great spot for smaller fish. It does get fished a little bit, but trolling back and forth along the dam wall in low light periods is a prime area for cod. Now, if you want more information on where to camp, where to go, and where to actually fish, we break down the entire Lake Eildon system in the SF Maps, which is an online platform inside the Social Fishing membership. There is stacks of info there. We pretty much traveled the entire lake, took photos of the entire lake system. We've got star ratings on the key spots, depending on summer, winter, key spots for Golden Perch, as well as Murray Cod. And you can see photos of the lake when it's really low, so you can see all the key structure, plus all the access. And that's at socialfishing.com.au if you want more information on that.
Now I'm gonna run you through the technique and a good technique for eel, but it depends on the time of year. If you're coming here in the summertime, your steeper rocky banks are your best starting point. It's got lots of small fish, they're great to troll. Troll them with a hard body, 70 to 100 mil hard body, ideal for 50, 60, 70 centimeter cod and up to your bigger cod as well. Those banks are also good to cast with a spinnerbait and a mumbler or a chatterbait as they're known. The other good thing about summer, or the other key structure to target in summer is your heavy timber, your heavy logs, your big logs. And that's where your spinnerbait and your mumbler or chatterbait come in super, super handy because you can grind them in the timber. In the summertime, the cod will be holding on the timber and they're likely to be in that deeper water, six, seven, eight meters deep. Yes, you will find fish outside of that realm, but that's the key rule. It's winter time here, and I'm gonna run you through my winter technique and how I'd fish. The difference is we're gonna be throwing plastics that haven't got a heavy jig head. So a lighter plastic or a light swim bait without a chin weight. And we're gonna fish it in the upper section of the water column. We don't need to let it get deep. This technique goes for anywhere, not just eelden. The fish are up shallow, but the biggest thing that might deter you is this spindly stuff. You can see spindly stuff everywhere here. We wanna be fishing as close as we can to it in those nice shallow spots. We've got a steeper bank out here and it actually rolls around into a nice shallow bay. This point here and the point on the other side of the bay over there are your prime zones and in the bay as well. So what we'll do, I'll just give you a quick run through whether I use a swim bait or a soft plastic, I'm fishing higher in the water column. And I wanna put it in as close to those trees as possible on a full cast at a diagonal angle. I'm just gonna let it sink a little bit and this is the technique I'd use in prime time. So we're a little bit early now but we're coming into prime time the Savo, which is actually when we're gonna be out here trying to catch a fish here. And I'm just gonna slow roll that. Slow roll that out all the way back to the boat. That thing doesn't get down deep. I'm rolling about two meters down. I avoid all the spindly trees and I'm actually in an effective depth. And it's an effective technique. I don't have to be right in there. Summertime, this technique really won't work that well. So I will work my way around and I will cast diagonally in and also on a parallel angle to these trees. If there are no trees, make sure you cast right up tight to the edge and slow roll it out. Mix up how long you let it sink for. So I'll do a wide one like that, out wide of this spindly tree. Because it is a little bit high that sun, I will let that sink just a little bit so it rolls in that three meter zone. But in prime time, you can literally cast, start your slow roll straight away, depending on the type of lure you have, anywhere from a meter to two meters to three meters. You don't have to be on the spindly trees, but when the dam is really, really high, you'll pretty much have it on every bank. So don't avoid it fish your points. When the spindly trees aren't there, look for heavy timber, logs, but nice shallow points. And the biggest key to chasing cod in general is bait. Find some kind of bait source, watch your sounder, use your sonar, your side scan, your down scan, or even your live tech to find bait source. But that is pretty much the basics of the key technique for winter. And obviously for the rest of this session, we'll be out here tonight. So follow along and watch exactly what we're doing as we try to find a fish. One thing with eel and the fish are really pelagic and they're pelagic in every lake, but eel is different to some. Some of them, they will gravitate towards trees. Um, in my angler, we find they do a bit of both. They go to the, you know, the trees and also uh, the edges. Eel and they do a bit of both, but the edges are really where it's at in winter. The shallow edges, the shallow points. It's not so much the spindly tree. They'll actually sit on these shallow edges in amongst the spindly trees, but they'll cruise around and you've just got to hope you can intercept them. But the shallow spots are key. So coming into here, there may be fish along this steeper edge and it's winter time right now. Summer, I'd definitely fish the steep edge in here. Winter time, fish a bit of steep, fish more of your shallow points like this, especially on prime time, fish where the bait's flicking on the shallow points, even shallower than this one again, but this one actually ridges out and comes out quite nicely. Mix up the steep and the shallow, mix up fishing in your bays and also on your outer banks until you find some sort of activity. But your biggest key is shallow, nice and shallow and close to the edges. If it's steep, right in against the, the vegetation. If it's a nice shallow gradient bank, like a gentle sloping bank, you don't have to be right in tight, but you wanna fish across the points. They won't necessarily be on every tree, like heavy tree, but you can see in here, we've got some nice heavy trees. As I work in, if there's two of us fishing here, I'd fish one against the bank, and I'd put a few casts in between all those big, heavy standing trees, uh, just to cover your basis, especially when you get these nice, big, heavy structure. A rundown on the key lures. If you are just getting into it, start with a spinnerbait. 
The humble spinnerbait, one ounce or one and a half ounce is the pick. Perfect in the summertime for casting the edge. It works well in winter as well, especially if you're worried about snags. You can fish them on heavy timber. You wanna have a spinnerbait in your kit for Lake Yildon. The other option here is a big beefy chatterbait or mumbler. Really works well, easy to fish, rocky banks perfect, timber perfect. Two great options to start with. Great summertime options. They also do work in winter, but there are some better options. Next, we'll move to our soft plastics, which is probably one of my favorite. Big soft plastics work well in the summer and in the winter, but this is what we're throwing on this winter trip. One that's rigged with a jig head that fishes deeper, one that you can fish lighter like this line through Fury. Insane winter lure, no matter where you chase cod. Obviously, rainbow trout color because there's a lot of trout in here, but big soft plastics. Don't worry about small ones in Eildon. If you're after bigger cod or any cod here, they're most likely to chase a bigger oversized lure like big soft plastics. Your next one are your swim baits. And you'll see here I've got an oversized swim bait. That's a Vitalian, super big, works really well for big Eildon cod. And you've obviously got the other end of the scale, a slim line swim bait. Looks more like a trout. Make sure you have one of each. It depends on the style, whatever brands. Just have a slim and a heavy, and a big oversized one because sometimes they'll want slim, sometimes they'll want bigger, plus more subtle when they splash, quite heavy and loud when they splash. These work well in the winter and in the summer. Obviously in the summer, you just chin weight them to get them down. If you're fishing in summer and you're trolling a standard hard body, an orgy, an AC, 70 mil up to 100 mil, perfect for trolling along for smaller fish. And if you chase a really small cod, a five eight ounce spinnerbait fished in against the trees, Perfect. I know a mate of mine who catches heaps of cod in Jerusalem Creek, right across from the boat ramp, just fishing small spinnerbaits. Cod of 40 and 50 centimeters in summer. The other option though is a high profile hard body. Really good for when the lake's a little bit lower and you've got lots of heavy timber. And you wanna fish right up on the shallow edges. You can bash it through the timber. That's a mega bass, uh, really good. That's a big M. Great all round lure for rivers and dams, but I've fished one here quite a bit and it works quite well, fishes quite well. And the last end of the scale is your top water. Uh, paddler and wake bait fish both of them they both work well murray cod are quite responsive in lake yield to surface lures usually we're chasing bigger fish so we go big personally but if you're chasing any size cod especially in summertime use your smaller top waters little paddlers 100 150 mil paddlers in the back of these bays where those smaller fish will be staging so many fish get caught on little paddlers in the summertime here but in the winter time when we're chasing bigger fish big wake baits big paddlers now touching on color color really doesn't matter but personally i like natural patterns that match what the fish are feeding on you'll see here we've got trout pattern roach pattern natural colors to a point um, and one other lure i didn't show you is obviously anything that's oversized really really big lures because these fish eat big presentations and really if that's a trout that's not a very big trout those big cod want to eat the biggest of prey possible so that's a huge obviously oversized swim bait soft plastic but you can see there nice natural color it's time for us to jump up now because it's coming into prime time. I think it's about 3.30. As that sun fades, that is the time we want to be on the water. And into the dark, we have two boats out here. We're going to try and find you a fish. Dan and Matt are in one boat. Jimmy and I are in this boat. Fingers crossed we can make it happen. So close, literally six foot leader, that's all I'm running at the moment. Came right up on it, literally on the rod tip. That was insane. After following the plastic. After following the plastic, that should have been the one. And followed then, your plastic again after that, but that, he should have, if we had more space, I reckon he would have eaten that. Yeah. He was keen though. But one part glad that he didn't grab it at the rod tip because I probably wouldn't have one left. <laughs> um, but yeah, we would have crossed that bridge when we came to it. We had heaps of non-lookers, first looker. Yep. It was a bit of action and he came up pretty hot, hey? Very. Came up real hot. <laughs> oh well. Keep going. No, it's only relatively young. We're gonna find another one, hey? You've had it. You're up. Oh, why not? Nothing left it. 
plastic. What a crunch, what a follow. Fishy, stay on, stay on, stay on. No. Yes. Yes! No race! Yes! Yes! Get him! 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 Get what a pluck. And he refused to fly. Weird. Do you know what it was? Do you think it's because it was down and he couldn't, like, he, couldn't he had to go up like that? Whereas that, he got heaps of. He came straight up as soon as you were up over his your head. fly you was him. up, 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 like the belly. He was only like, what, less than two meters under the water. He was less. Under. Meter. Yeah. Jimmy B. Yes, mate. Well done. I want to get this yard tail fly on. Yes! <laughs> Yeah, I'd say oh, it How epic is that? Eel to Murray Cod. The two boats, we've got both boats here at the minute. All come over to have a look at this fish. It's in the net. I'm going to pick it up. Epic moment, as you just saw. Jimmy, thanks for the net job, mate. You're welcome. So stoked. I think it's going to go a metre. Uh, obviously, it's dark, clear water. They, we, we're going to have a crack in the morning, see if we can show you one in the daylight, but what an experience. It's my first big Eel to Cod. We're going to lift it in, I think. I think it's a metre. -y. I'm gonna not kick these plies in. The hook's falling out there. That is a big fish. Now we wanna look after this fish and be quick. That is deep, look at that. Lay it straight on the brag mat. Pinch it in the side of the jaw with my glove. Got everything ready, it can sit in the net as long as it wants. That is an Eildon Trophy Murray Cod. That is what we have come here for. I'm stoked, it's my biggest Eildon Cod. Yes, it's dark, it's been late in the night. We've fished very hard tonight, proper. Yielden metery. And the things we've talked about in this video are all tips that we follow, all things that we follow, and hopefully some of them will help you catch fish. The lure's fallen out, I got that on a line through Fury. I showed you that earlier in today's video this afternoon. Epic moment, epic fish. So good. Meter two. Yes. She's over the meter. And she's super fat and super pretty colors. No support her weight, sorry. We're doing this quick. The footage will look rubbish. <laughs> Sorry guys, it's all about the fish. Oh. Ooh, hoo, hoo. It's all about keeping them in the water. With a bigger fish, we'll actually get out and get on the bank, get in our waders, keep the fish in the water the whole time. Um, it's obviously very overgrown at the minute. We always want to look after the fish, protect them. We had it in for not long at all. And winter time is the time that they're really quite happy. Um, in the summertime, you don't want to hold them on the surface like this. You've got to get them back in. Quick photo, gone. Even if that, I don't really chase big girls in summer too much. But in winter, that fish can sit in the net while we get all our gear ready. We can get all the stuff ready. We can do what we like, do what we need. Get all the pliers, get everything. So when it's out of the water, minimal time, I can hold this. I could hold this fish here for hours, and the fish would be absolutely fine. Obviously, we don't do that. But just for an example, fins are going super, super happy. Very special moment, that's for sure. Beautiful fish, she'll be ready to go. Thank you very much, you beautiful yielding cod. Get out of here. Down under the boys' boat. What a moment, thank you very much. So special, every single one. Yielding fish, even more special. I'm so glad we caught that fish tonight. Let's see what the rest of the night holds, or possibly even the morning. Well done, mate. Thank you. Thank you. 
We've just finished up the morning session and we had no luck. We're about to head in. A little bit about that fish last night. It's my biggest eel and cod and I'm so stoked to have caught it. Incredible capture. And I actually caught it on the line through Fury. Rolled it above his head nice and high in the water column. This is one of the lures that I discussed and talked about in that lure sit down we went over. But we were just fishing late into the night. That fish went a meter two. As you saw the whole video unfold, all I did was make sure we were quiet with the boat and we presented our lures well. We actually were on a slightly steeper edge, closer to sort of some flat feeding banks. We talk about flat key banks all the time. We weren't far from one of those flat key banks. Like the one I demonstrated on, we had that rocky edge and we rolled around into a flat bay. We were actually on the steeper bit because the sun had just gone down. Now we've just finished up from a big trip at Lake Eildon. We actually ended up getting a stack more fish throughout the trip and that video was all filmed for our membership platform. It's called the Social Fishing Membership. You can check it out in the links in the description below or just visit socialfishing.com.au. The video was from the three days we were here and we got onto some incredible fish. I think we caught seven or eight fish. Murray Cod with the biggest going a meter 20. Now that thing was next level. And if you wanna see it all, plus the tips on where we fished, how we fished, it's all inside that platform. If you do jump in, you'll also get maps, detailed maps that I talked about earlier on, on where the key spots are to launch, uh, all the key fishing spots, plus a trip report from this trip and all the other fishing trips we do throughout uh, every single calendar year. We write what we did, what we learned, all the details so that it helps you guys out in the water. That is the whole point of social fishing and what we do is to help you learn. So that's it from Lake Eildon. We had a blast and I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, send me a message and jump on the Social Fishing Membership to learn more about Lake Eildon and all the other places we visit. That's Lake Eildon and we had an epic time. Mm -hmm.